Welcome to the Legends of Iron. I'm John Anderson. Meet my co-host, Nick Best, and Austin Williams. We're going to have some amazing guests on the show. Buckle up tight, because we're going to be talking about the shit you're not supposed to be talking about. We're going to be discussing anything and everything it takes to become a legend of iron. Legends of Iron is brought to you by Muscle Mints. Muscle Mints is the creator of Carnival Pure Beef Protein Icing. Beef built muscle and Carnivore is the world's number one selling beef protein. And don't forget to try our new Carnivore flavor, Rocket Pop. Oh, damn! Whoa, this is it right here. Wow, is this is protein? Delicious. This is too good to be protein. Woo, we about to change the game with this one. You're gonna f***ing love it. Welcome to another edition of Legends of Iron. I am John Anderson. With me always my partners in crime, Nick Best and Akeem Williams. We have got a killer show for you today. <clears throat> We've got one of the world elite in the house. We have a guy, a guy who just had a breakout performance at the Arnold, even better, he was an alternate, which gives him even that much more credibility coming, basically showing up, not even knowing he's going to compete, and then coming out and just blowing it up. Awesome stuff. We are so excited to welcome Bobby Thompson to the show. What's up, my brother? How you doing? Not, not much, guys. Doing all right. Doing all right. Staying busy. Happy to be here. I love it. Bobby! <laughs> What's up, <laughs> buddy? Hey, man. How you doing? <laughs> I bet, I, dude, you know that followed me to Dubai. <laughs> that followed me to Dubai. <laughs> That's awesome. I Nick, I love you, but I hate you. <laughs> <laughs> but brother, let's, dive, you. let's dive right into the most exciting shit. The Arnold just went by. You showed up as an alternate, which means you're there, but you don't really know you're going to compete. You get the word, and you show up, you jump in the mix, and you just fucking blow the place up in a very good way. Talk us through that. So you show up knowing it's a possibility. Just kind of take, tell it, take us through how it went in your mind. You know how it went in my mind? I was aware that I was an alternate for quite some time. But it was very much back and forth because of the Russia and Ukraine situation. Who's coming? Who's not? Jan Todd was kind of keeping me updated, but she really didn't know. Um, and then two days, I was, I was God, two days before I was supposed to leave. I got the final call saying, Hey, like Mateus can't make it. He's injured. I was like, okay. And it, it really, my switch was all, was already flipped. I needed to be ready. Um, but it, it's very difficult to be in that state of alert and ready to go when you don't yeah. know if there's an end to it. It's very draining. Yeah. It's very difficult. Um, and then, I, you know, I showed up on contest day. I, I don't think I had my best performance. Um, I definitely left some stuff on the table. Um, some opportunities to put myself into potentially lone third instead of a tie for third, maybe even second. But all in all, I can't be upset. I performed. You know, the guys did well. You performed so I, extremely well, brother. Don't undersell. Don't tell don't me I'm sure here. You fucking rocked the house, brother. And I'm I mean, not afraid to say it. You fucking killed it, man. I appreciate that, but Nick and I'm sure all, th all the you guys will confirm as well that winning or not winning, excuse me, placing well is only cool for about 15 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, yeah. and then it's kind, and then it's kind of like, all right, like that, that was cool, but it's gone yeah. now, so I got to go do something else. Yeah, yeah. Time to get back to work. Yeah, gotta, exactly, find, yeah. gotta find that. Gotta find the top of that podium, of course. <clears throat> so exactly. So you're, talk you're, us, you're, you're, talk you're, us. He, he's definitely one of those guys that just. You don't live in the moment, huh? As soon as no, I no. Okay. It gets its time and then it's done. I'm ready to go. <laughs> That's it. Mm -hmm. That's it. That's it. That's it. I guarantee he's only looking behind himself if he's trying to fix a mistake. He's always looking ahead. What's the next? What's what's next to conquer? Is that about right, brother? <laughs> that, that's Fucking exactly man. that's exactly right. And I had a contest the the weekend after the Arnold. I had to go to Texas and then mm -hmm. I fly to Leeds tomorrow. So I've got so much going on that. There's no time. Like I, it, it was cool. It was great. I'm, I'm proud of what I did, and it did really give me a lot of notoriety. And I feel like it was a great statement for 2022 as a start. But yeah, that was three weeks ago. Really doesn't matter. Yeah. But. Well, I know, I know you're looking past it, but for our listeners and even us, we're excited to hear you talk us through the contest event by event. 
because that that's okay. I mean that was a very unique contest, new events, and uh, un unfortunately some big injuries. So take us yeah. event by event. You know, tell us what you saw. What were you feeling? I mean, the place was electric. It, it was electric. It was probably the coolest arena I've ever been in. Yeah. Like, yeah. the Arnold... The Arnold to the next level. Oh, 100%. Yeah. They really did. Um, the first event being being the max squat, uh, that was that was a rough prep for me. Um, I had two severe strains, one in each brachialis. So, oh when God. you're... Yeah, so, I, I mean, I couldn't... Like, there were, there were a couple days I didn't brush my teeth because I couldn't do it. Um, oh, wow. yeah. So, and then having log circus dumbbell or mo the monster dumbbell and then back squat in the same contest, it, that's, mm -hmm. you're ruining your breaky yeah. just day after day after day. So yeah, let's for, not forget about the stone either. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I, stones weren't, weren't really an issue for me. And it was, it was really when I was in this position and I was being jarred downward. That's when I had yes. issues. Um, yeah. but you know, in the squat alone, I went through three squat suits. So I blew out, or excuse me, deadlift suits. I squat in a conventional deadlift suit. I don't wear squat suits. Um, but I blew out my first one, which was kind of my old faithful. I was like, shit. So in the order, contest? In, no, in the con no. Oh, I was going to say, in holy training. shit. Oh, no. This, <laughs> yeah. This kid, yeah. So I blew, I blew it out in training. And I was like, well, got, you know, got away with that. Went to get it repaired. It started blowing out again. Ordered another suit. Got it. And then found out I couldn't have Velcro straps on my suit. So then I had to order another suit. Oh. And I got to my third session in that suit was at that, was that event. Oh, wow. So, wow. Yes. Yeah, so, yeah. So, and it was, <laughs> yeah, it just, it was a rough ride. Um, yeah. it, it was a good day. I made some very beginner mistakes on the equipment. Uh, one, I did not make a big enough deal about safety precautions on the model lift. As an athlete, I should have done that. They, uh, we had to work with them having one space selected for the hooks for everybody. Ah. Which, yeah, which doesn't exactly. Nick shaking his head, no. Yeah, but that's they a big problem. Big but problem for you guys, you know. <laughs> but that, well, so, Nick, that was the issue. They couldn't, they couldn't adjust those hooks without because unloading the bar. the bar. Yes. Oh. Yes. So, the bar. And then when you squat with that bar, the, we, I had some work with a bow bar, which was similar. But when you squat with a double T bar and you hit the pads, it it jolts you forward. So you had to correct for that a little bit. Um, and then, quite frankly, I just got too excited. My blood pressure spiked, and I started getting really dizzy. I was uh, I was unconscious for the for the top. Oh no, excuse me. I, I was almost unconscious for the top of eight thirty. I have no memory of locking out nine hundred, and then nine forty six. It was just kind of we're going to go for broke and hope this works. And all I said was. When, yeah. let's say, when, when your memory comes back, hopefully you're standing up with the, with the bar on the hooks. <laughs> well, so with, 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 with 900, when things started kind of going, my last thought, my last memory I have was lock your knees out and pray. Like just get every <laughs> joint you have in a straight line and gravity will keep you in place. And I got lucky. And it, it played out well. Um, that led us into, I believe, the circus dumbbell, um, which is a monster mm -hmm. dumbbell, which is a thicker handle. Um, I'm capable of a 300 pound circus dumbbell if it's a normal circus dumbbell. Um, I didn't, I wasn't able to map that piece of equipment effectively and quickly enough just because I never, I touched one on one other occasion. It was 50 pounds lighter. So those dumbbells, their handles are significantly thicker than a normal circus dumbbell. So mm -hmm. if you can't map the equipment, you're kind of in trouble. So that's what got me yeah. there. Um, yeah. And then going into log press, you know, I had real high hopes for 480. Um, Luke and I are always kind of like right there. It's like, who's going to try and jump too big to get over the next one. So when, uh, when Luke Stoltman came in and hit 470, I was like, okay, I need this event win. Um, so I made a shot at 480. Didn't quite have the lockout. Just wasn't there. Um, I believe partially because I'd only been able to do singles on log squat and dumbbell with my breaky house, my elbows leading up to that event. So I really didn't have time to develop much volume and work capacity for that. So not making excuses, but it definitely played a role. And then no, JF, just, you're, yeah. you're just explaining how everything went, brother. This, this is not, we totally, this is not you making an excuse. Yeah. This is you just giving us an inside look at how the shit mm -hmm. really went down. Oh, yeah. Well, and, and Bobby's also the best log presser in America. He's got yeah. the American record. So, yeah. I mean, if anybody's, yeah. he, he's the best guy for the log in the United States right now. I, I mean, brother, yeah, remember, 
you what? couldn't brush your teeth and you still competed days before you're having a hard time brushing your teeth and you still competed there. There's no excuse in this stories anywhere. <laughs> you know? that, is, that is, that is, that is fair. Um, but yeah, and the log went how the log went, how it went. Um, I have no complaints. I, I looked at it as a big technical win because that clean with 480 was probably the most flawless yeah. clean with that weight that I've had. So I was very happy with how that clean went. Um, but then with the, with the rogue dumbbell just wasn't, wasn't a great event for me. I was, I was excited for it, but then I realized, like, shit, I can't map this thing. Like, I can't figure out just where I need to be. Um, so, and that, that bit me in the ass a little bit and gave some guys some, some wiggle room, some points to kind of slide in. And then we moved over. Gosh, what came next? I believe that, yes, then the frame came next. Um, the frame, I had, I had done really well in training with it, but I think just by the time I got to it, my central nervous system was kind of fried out. And yep. that frame, it, it tore my hands up pretty bad. Um, it, it ripped me, it ripped me pretty thick on both hands. And once blood gets on the bar, it's slick. It's not going to work. Yep. Um, so I, the first time I dropped it was because both hands tore. And then that was 18 feet of Bobby's going to learn a whole lot about himself. Um, it's really good. I, it, it, once, I, once, I dro- once I dropped it, I knew what had happened. I was like, I'm not going to look at him. I'm not going to look at him because I already know what that was. And then it was a whole bunch of words that I didn't even think I knew. It's a really good thing I wasn't mic'd up. I was, <laughs> yeah, it was, it was like I'm, I'm, I'm known for the, for like work, like hanging out with kids at contests. Like that's that's what I like being known for. I like hanging out with the kids. And I was just thinking, like, God, if I had been mic'd up, that would never have been a thing again. Um, and then the, yeah, and then the stone to shoulder. Um, that was rough. Stones aren't are not a strong event for me. Um, they've gotten better over the years, but a natural stone doesn't really have much, or an Atlas stone doesn't carry over into a natural stone very well. Um, as we saw with Trey Mitchell struggling, Tom Stoltman mm-hmm. struggling, even Luke Stoltman struggling the way he did. Luke's a damn good stone loader. Ooh, people just yeah. forget that. Um, but I, I didn't know this, but apparently there is a front and back to that stone. Apparently there yep. is like uh, an accepted method. I wasn't aware of this and yep. I'm so bad with anything stones that after the second time I dropped it, I was like, I'm going to do the opposite of what I thought was the right thing. We're going to see how this goes. <laughs> so I spun it, got hooked up and picked it up. And once I knew I got it off the ground, I wasn't really concerned about getting it to my shoulder. Um, I've got, I've got really broad shoulders. I've got a big upper back. I've got a lot of squeeze strong, sque- uh, like what's called squeeze strength. So I knew once I got it to my to like got my arms wrapped around it, it wasn't going anywhere. Um, so that was that was a hellacious moment when I dropped it. I almost just walked away after the first time. I wasn't even gonna try again. I was like, you know what? Like that's that that's a lot more than I thought was about to happen. Um, but then they had this nice little rule where you had to put it back on the platform. Mm. So <laughs> it was kind of <laughs> yeah, right. So which which I get because there have been some big issues with that throughout the years. Yeah. Um, so that threw me off a little bit, but at, with the way the point shook out, I was one rep on the dumbbell away. That log, if I tied Luke on log press, if I carried the frame three more feet, I would have to have squatted another 30 pounds, which I probably had in me under different circumstances, but not that day. Um, or if I had taken that stone to my chest one more time, I would have had outright third, potentially even second place. So yes. there were a lot of like one rep situation that it yeah. was kind of like shit. Like, <clears throat> well, but you know, it was a- it's a, always just a few little things that can make the difference. And good thing for you, brother, you had a mm-hmm. handful of little things that it really shows you that you were just a couple of small moves away from being like right at the top, which is pretty fucking awesome. You know what I mean? I, I agree. That that's my, my coach said the same thing. Um, and then my, my, my whole team was under that very same impression said the same thing. Um, I did, I did have a moment after the log press thing where I was like, damn it. Like I, I legitimately believe I'm the best log presser in the world. Like that is there for me. I just haven't executed it yet, which hurts even more. So I had my moment and walked away and my, my chiropractor came over and worked on my elbow. And then I walked past uh, Stoltman. And I looked up at him. He was standing there with Dan Hipkiss, his coach. And I walked up and he went Bobby and gave me a hug. And I looked at him. I was like, I beat you because I missed bigger than you did. Now, how, That's exactly how far- what how far away you away are you from the world record in terms of the log press? Depends on the day, man. Mm. I have He's I have twenty six pounds. I, mm. Officially twenty six pounds. Striking, I've beaten tri- striking distance for sure, you know. Yeah. Well, yeah. I've beaten I've beaten the American record in training before. Okay. 
So that's kind of my thing. And I haven't, I, I haven't told anyone what my best log is. Well, my best log has been in training. Like that's something I'm keeping in my back pocket because I don't want people to know. I want them to only, I want them to only think I can log press four seventy eight point five. That's the current American record. I want them to think that's all Bobby can do. Gotcha. That's you. perfect. Yeah. That's, so, so when you show up and fucking and lay down the the big one, everybody's going, "Where the fuck did that come from?" When four eighty falls in contest, there will be a streamline to the world record. It may not happen that day, but when four eighty falls for me in contest, it's going to be another hop and a skip, and then it'll probably be five ten. Bam! Just like that, nice. baby. Yeah, I, 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 I already know. I, yeah, I already know I can clean a five hundred plus pound log. Like I already know I can clean it. It's just a matter of getting comfortable and being able to press it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Being able to trick press it because he doesn't use his legs very much. I've gotten better. I've gotten better. I've gotten better. Shoulder power. It's all up on strength. (laughs) Wow. That's impressive, man. Well, it's it's scary. It's it's, it's impressive still, regardless. It's impressive. It's gotten me. I will say my ability to strict press has gotten me out of a lot of hot water in contest. That's just straight. That's that's it, just straight up it, old school yeah. horsepower right there. Yeah. That's just horsepower. It's, you know? it's like guys that just use they all all they back <sighs> and lower back and just deadlift and no legs whatsoever. Yeah, that's <laughs> freaking impressive. Yeah, yeah. 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 It'll, it'll, it's, yeah. It, it's it's got me in a little bit of trouble, but overall, it's yeah. definitely been a gift. Uh, Nick, as you uh, excuse me, Ark, as you say that. Uh, yeah. You you realize you described Nick's deadlift perfectly. <laughs> <laughs> he, just, he just gets his feet real close up to the bar, bends uh, way the fuck over the front, over the top of it, you know. Yeah, yeah, it it just not. just straight up. It's just he just starts fucking cranking. It just starts coming up, you know. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, I, 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 yeah, I can't, uh, Nick, I can't defend your deadlift other than it works. It's, it's exactly, uh, you, you can't argue with the numbers. However, they get there, they're there. They, you know? they get out, yeah, <laughs> exactly. Uh, it, it works, works. my back's okay. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Y- yes, it, it works, your back's okay. You can deadlift 500 pounds for 20 reps at the end of a session. Like, yeah. I mean, it's really hard to tell somebody they're wrong at that point. That's true. Yeah. That's true. <laughs> yeah, yeah, when someone's that good, you can't really tell them that they're, they're doing it wrong. Well, it's more, like, it's more like when they're that old, you can't tell them they're doing it wrong. <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, I love oh, it. Man. I love it. Uh, <laughs> or we just don't listen, one of the two. Uh, <laughs> oh, God. I love it. So, Nick, how, how's your hand doing, Nick? My what? How's your hand? What, you about? don't remember Worlds 2020 where you came up behind me when I was eating and wrapped me up in a choke? Oh, shit. <laughs> so, well, my, hand's fine. Sitting at, my hand's fine. So I was sitting at a high top table. Fork. It was oh, a butter God. knife. Oh, butter it knife. was a butter knife. So I, I, I wasn't aware it was Nick, and I had a mouthful of food, and Nick comes up and puts me in a rear naked choke when I'm, sit- when I'm seated, and I knew I was gotten. Uh-huh. I knew he had gotten me, but I didn't know it was him, and I, I, I bounced for 10 years in some very violent places, so a reaction is a thing. So I reached yeah, out yeah. and grabbed the first instrument I could, and I started digging it into his hand. I was like, fuck, it's only a butter knife, but somebody's going to let me go. And I realized it was Nick. I was like, I peeled his skin, yeah. Yeah, as I peeled his skin up, and I'm like, oh, God. But what was funny is that my pocket knife was sitting within inches of that butter knife. Oh, so that, would, that, would, that would have been a different yeah. hand left behind yeah. your neck for sure. I, I no, to this no. day, to this day, I still feel bad about that. <laughs> <laughs> to this day, I forgot so, about it. <laughs> well, so I, dude, well, because it's Nick Fest, like, because at the time you were still sponsored by Cerberus. So I sent I sent Ken to Wiki, who owns Cerberus USA. I sent him a message saying, I just fucked up. You're going to kick me off the team. So he goes, why? What happens? Like, I just stabbed Nick Best. And then he calls me. He's like, what the fuck did you do? I was like, I just stabbed Nick Best. <laughs> then I explained it to him. I was like, I feel so bad. This is the nicest guy ever. I stabbed him. <laughs> all the times in my life, like, yeah. I mean, I stabbed like a 75-year-old man, Nick. That's never fine. <laughs> Oh my god! Oh my god! You gotta tell you, but you gotta Nick, love it when, when we have the young the young bucks come on. They are just digging on Nick about the old folk jokes. Oh yeah, Nick, oh, yeah. I'm, I'm digging on Nick because he called me Gimli at Clash oh, of the Coast, where I set the American World Record, and it followed me to the Middle East. 
I mean, <laughs> it followed me to Dubai. There were memes well, made. Me People were sending me photos. I was like, oh, God damn it. It's like, God know, damn it, man. There's something about a nickname. When it works, it just fucking sticks. You know? Uh, it works for him, too. No. <laughs> Well, that's because strong, man. If you're not 6'5", you're 5'6". Like, I'm six foot one. I'm not a short person. I am a average height. But then uh, brother, you get to it. I lived, I lived in that world, too. I lied about my fucking height the whole time I competed. You know? Yeah, but I'm not telling. The doctor even says I'm 6'1". It's not a lot. John, you did. Yeah. So, so, John, what did you say your height was, John? Oh, uh, fuck. I mean, if I said it was too much, they'd fucking wrap me out on the TV. Colin Bryce said, oh, he says he's 6'1", but I don't think he's 6'1 when I walked out. I'm like, Jesus, Colin. Thanks, Jesus. <laughs> Christ. You're supposed to be making the show better here, you know? Well, just, so at the Shaw Classic, the announcer called me Stocky. I'm like, you son of a bitch. <laughs> and he's a, he's a light dude. Well, yeah. the same, and then at the, uh, excuse me, and then at the Arnold, the same announcer, the same guy called me Compact. <laughs> I'm like, dude. Yeah, these, are, these are these are adjectives that could go either direction. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. You, know, you I, like an adjective that can't be misunderstood. He's a brick shit house. That's better than compact, right? You know? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, 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 it, oh my god, it's fucking old. It's, 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 so then somebody told me it's how broad my shoulders are and how like thick front to back I am. They're like, you just look like you'd be short. I was like. Uh. Okay, well, fuck off. <laughs> it's, it's probably the one if, thing. If, if, go ahead, Doc. I was just saying it's probably the one thing in powerlifting that actually matters. You know, height matters in powerlifting, right? Well, yeah. yeah. So height matters. Yes, yeah. So you're you're right, but in powerlifting, you want to be short. Okay. And in strongman, you like I said, you're either six five or five six. There's no you point. Be yeah. Okay, okay. Because yeah. you know, fuck it. Nowadays, you got these fucking guys that are. Everybody that's over six five has got arms like eternity long, so they can wrap right. their arms around everything. Like back in the way back in the day, Phil Fister was the only guy who had those wingspans, and he could literally yep. lock his fucking hands around the back of a three sixty five stone, or excuse me, a three eighty stone. Everybody else was like, you know, talking like nine inches between fingertips, and this fucker is doing this. Around, oh, yeah. Just straight around the back. Well, <clears throat> the advantage that you have when you can lock your hands around the back of something is just unbelievable in a sport mm. strong man. You well, know? so no. I, I, if I can get my arms, even though, like, I don't have short arms, but, again, thick front to back, it shortens your levers. So if I can get some kind of resemblance of wrapped around something, it's not going anywhere. But where it gets me is on throwing events. Mm. And I remember Jan Todd was asking if I would do the weight over bar for the record breaker event at the Arnold. <laughs> I was like, Jill, who has that record currently? And she goes, Thor. And I was like, how tall am I? Yeah. Or then like yeah. at, World, at Worlds last year where they're doing the keg over bar, and then it's like Brian walks up, and I'm like, he, he, he's there. He, he's like, it's, it, it, no. Like, this is stupid. Put him in a hole and give me a stool. Like, yeah, yeah. Okay. no, there's pros and cons to it. Brother, while we're talking about this whole thing of, of, of shorts and short arm spans, <clears throat> one of the questions I was going to ask you was, mm -hmm. explain one of your, we've all had them in the, in the, you know, a moment in a contest that was just motherfucker. How did that fucking go wrong? You know what I mean? There's, cause you always mm -hmm. have those don't, I'm going to follow this up with what was your greatest memory, but let's start off with the, what motherfucker, how did that, that happen? Talk to us about that, about that moment. Oh, wow. How did that happen? <clears throat> There's been so many. Um, <laughs> yeah. Pick the one that's the so, most entertaining. Give us the most entertaining of the group. How's that? So Okay, got you. So in 2019, I believe, I want to say it was 2019 or the start of 2020, um, I went to the Arnold Canada. That was my first, like, kind of big pro show. I'd been to Lithuania already. It was a little bit smaller. Well, then they sent us to the Arnold Canada. I was like, okay, cool. I'm going to go rock this. This is going to be great. And I had been throwing sandbags, and I was I had just come off a win at the OSG where I took second in a throwing event I'd never thrown before. And I was like, oh, like, I'm actually just kind of okay at this kind of event. It's like, this will be great. Man, it was my first time throwing kegs, and I missed this keg, grabbed it again, and grabbed it weird, and went to throw it. And it was a 50-pound, 50, 50 or 55-pound keg. Right about the time it got chest level, the keg goes straight out, my feet go straight up. <laughs> Did you land on I am back? in front of I laid me on the back of the back of my head. Um, I am in an arena that 
There's four thousand people. There's four thousand people in the stands in Warwick, and I'm just laying there looking up at the sky, going, "What the fuck?" I was like, "How? How did we get here?" That's a good. That's a good. What the not, fuck story, not, brother? That's pretty. What, fucking what, good. what direction did the keg go, though? That's what I was. I was <laughs> it went straight. It went straight right at the camera guy. <laughs> Wait, what, do right say, what, what do you say? You're looking up? I thought he was coming back down on top of you. <laughs> no, no, no. So right about the time that was like released right here at the top level, the keg just goes straight out. Okay, both, okay, my, okay. both my feet go up, and I popped up and went to grab the keg and try again. Okay. But it was, I was a little too cocky because I had I won the first event at that contest. I beat out Evan Singleton, Jeff Caron, Avars, a couple really good guys on a yoke event, and I was like, oh, okay, I'm good at this. This is good. And then I took, like, third on the Viking press, and I'm, like, the new kid, and it's like, oh, geez, like, that's two events, a first and a third finish for the new guy. And then I ended up pulling up – I have a bone fusion in both feet, so I screwed that up on the truck pull. And I get to the keg event, I'm like, okay, like, I'm going to make up some ground. Like, I'm going to make up some ground here. Nope. No, nah, man. Brother, I, I know why it happened. I know why it happened. After I hear the story, I can tell you why it happened. It's, you're too compact. <laughs> <laughs> you know, John – you're too, sto- you're too stocky. What was that? Was that the other one, stocky? That was the other. Yes, that was that, that was the other verb. That was you. That's it. That, that, that announcer nailed it. It was just those two adjectives. What summed it up? You know, shit. <laughs> the best part though is he completely underestimates the crowd at Warwick. It's like twenty thousand people. I mean, yes, the stands yeah. are full. The whole town's there. Yeah. The, the, the grandstands alone. I mean, it's it's just people everywhere. So to do that, there's a lot of people there. Yeah, so, oddly yeah, enough, I can get it. Yeah, like oddly, yes, yeah, that was well. Yeah, you know, there may have been more. I that was so long ago, and quite frankly, I'd never <laughs> seen that many people in one place before. So I was, <laughs> I was looking around. I was like, dude, in Canada, they come out for those contests, man. It's, yeah. like, it's but, almost like yeah. there's nothing to do. So fuck, there's so many few. There's so few choices. Oh shit, there's a contest, and not to mention yeah. they fucking love that shit up there. Well, yeah. Canada is really sports oriented. They are a yeah. very mm-hmm. sports oriented country. And the closer you get to kind of like the French Canadian provinces, which Warwick is, it's a completely yep. French Canadian speaking or French speaking province for the most part. Um, the closer you get to Quebec, the bigger it gets, just because of Louis Thier being from there. Jeff Caron lives there, um, so it's it. That was a yep. cool experience. That was cool. All right, brother. So now go to the flip side. <clears throat> what was the best fuck yeah moment? We had the well, goddamn it moment. Now let's go to the other side. Let's talk about the hot fucking A. I'm, that that was fucking awesome. That was the best moment. You know that that moment in straw man that you just was. You can't. It's like you just want that feeling back. That sh- shouldering that stone at the Arnold. <clears throat> oh, that's fucking shouldering, great, brother. Wow. Well, yeah, great. shouldering that just because it's something that even Laws mentioned it on the when he was commentating. I'm I'm not somebody who's looked at as a versatile athlete. Um, I'm, the, I'm that guy, like if it's a static event, Bobby's got a shot and I don't really understand why. Um, I, I'm, I move pretty well. I've got a, I've got a damn decent grip. It's, it's, when I'm, it's just, you're, you're just too compact, brother. <laughs> <laughs> Fair. But when I, when I, when I, when I, when I shouldered that stone, it was kind of like a moment of, it was like, okay guys, like I'm here to play. Like this yeah. is stupid. And oh, yeah. it brother, just seems that, that people so forgot. Fucking- Awesome that you had that moment on the fucking big stage like the Arnold. That's really fucking cool, man. Yeah. yeah. Totally, it, it was, totally it was, fucking awesome, man. It was definitely the location. Not so much the event. It was the location that made it worth yeah. it. And it yeah, wasn't a deadlift. It wasn't a long press event. Yeah. But for some reason in the sport of strongman, people, I just, they assume that I can only log press and deadlift. No matter how many times I do finish a medley that most guys don't or you know, about the only thing you need to you need to sell me short on is Atlas stones. But loading, shouldering that stone was kind of an indicator to the crowd, like, okay, the kid's been doing some work behind the scenes. Mm. So <laughs> that's that's killer. I, I, got, I, got, I, got, I got I got a question for Bobby though. What you after, got, man? After an event like the Arnold, how much calories are you putting down after the show? Being oh, like I don't beat eat. up your body so oh. bad and. You post know, contest? Yeah, I can't eat for like two days. I can't eat for like two days post contest. So you want you one of those kind of guys? I am, yeah. It's well, eating has become very difficult for me. Um, okay. it, it, what it was, I don't want to blame it on COVID, but I caught COVID before it was COVID, and it was yeah. getting. It was in twenty twenty, and I was up to three hundred and seventy three pounds for the Arnold. Okay, I was mm-hmm. big and I was strong, and then I COVID, and then I lost like twenty five pounds, and then ever yeah. since then, I haven't been able to eat the way I used to. 
Um, which I, I, I definitely know how you feel because that's one of the reasons why I didn't do the Arnold this year, actually. Yeah. I, mm-hmm. I had COVID right after, after Christmas, mm-hmm. and I lost like 25 pounds also. So I understand yeah, it, how you feel. Uh, yeah, it was, it was rough. And then, I guess, just having – well, I hope you have better luck coming back for it than I have. But I, I'm lucky enough that with that being said, recently – there's a gentleman in town, uh, Jer- Dr. Jericho Matthews. He's kind of picked me up. He's become one of my one of my best friends, dare I say. And he's reworked my diet. Mm-hmm. We're, we're, we're not reworked my training so much, but my recovery methods. And mm-hmm. he's been a big help. So, And believe it or not, removing rice from my diet made everything significantly easier. I live on sweet potato fries. <laughs> I live I'm telling you, it's all life. about your diet. It's what you can digest. If you can figure out what you digest, that's the fucking ticket. Because clearly you digest sweet potato better than rice. But until you figure that shit out, eating is such a fucking chore. You know? Well, it was. Great. And I've lost, I've lost eight pounds since we made the switch. But I'm not as bloated all the time. I'm getting more yep. food in. Okay. Yep. And yeah. Yeah, it was just you you only lost a few pounds because your metabolism is speeding up because your digestion speeds up, which feeds your metabolism. You'll end up coming back. You'll end up going up, up. Oh, yeah. But right now you're just right now you're you're clearing out that bloat and all that shit that was in there is is burning through. Mm -hmm. Well, and that's exactly what it was is I was literally taking a shit. (laughs) Like, like like, that's like the bloat was gone. And then I was really concerned about what that was going to do for my deadlift coming into worlds with a ladder. And then two weeks ago, I just loaded up after squats, and I was like, let's see what I can do. Just kind of load up, look, work to a mediocre single, see how I feel. And I pulled 887 after squatting, and I was like, wow. okay. I was like, I was like yeah, okay. So when, I was, when, when, that, I, when the blow goes away, you're going to start performing so much better because when you're bloated like that, your body's not absorbing the nutrient value. That bloat is telling you there's a problem. So by yes. getting that blood to go away, even if you're a few pounds lighter, you're going to start to perform. And I'm talking about strength. You know, mm-hmm. it's, you're going to start getting stronger, even if even if you're a few pounds lighter, because now you've got the nutrient upload, which is what the body needs to to recover mm-hmm. and move forward. Well, there's and there, there's I mean, obviously, if your body's holding on to a bunch of excess calories, you're bloated. The majority of your blood flow is going to your stomach, trying to deal with that digestion issue. So alone, my work capacity capabilities have gone up just from not being a bloated sack of shit all the time. That's like, dare I say, mm-hmm. yeah, like, and I'm like, okay, this is great. Um, so it, it's, it's, it's definitely great to have that and that person behind me added to my team. Good. So, yeah. That's great news, brother. Great news. Mm-hmm. I'm telling you, when an athlete figures out what food he digests – efficiently that's a fucking game changer for an athlete period 100 you, know? you know and so many athletes See, I, never figured out i know I, 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 I that's why i was trying to tell nick, nick stop eating all those burritos man <laughs> yeah. i think just in fine i'm not bloated at all <laughs> okay hold up let's talk about this though nick, is, nick are you retired from strongman officially are you done with strongman okay but you're you're at least I would say six to seven months of good work away from being in fight <laughs> shape for strongman, right? For, for world strongest man level, yeah. That's the, okay. That's that's what I'm. Yeah, that's what I'm. So you've got six to seven months. You've already got married to a hot wife. You don't have any contests coming up. You can be a bloated <laughs> piece of shit. It's not a big deal. <laughs> <laughs> like, well, thank you very much, Bobby. I appreciate yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm very fortunate. I will say this. <laughs> yeah, I mean, but uh, yeah, no, I got a contest in July. July 23rd, what are you doing? Gonna do a, uh, Chad Coy's putting on a master's contest for, no, uh, yeah. for yeah, class. In yeah. July, he asked him if I could come out and, and do the announcing, but fuck, I'm going to be in my cabin in Tahoe, the same fucking two-week span hmm. that that contest. Bob's bummed I mean, out. I'm like, shit. I mean, it's cool. Chad Coy, I mean, Chad Coy asked you for a favor, and you're choosing to go on vacation. It's fine, man. Hey, you're good. <laughs> <laughs> good, good, good. <laughs> wow. Well done. Oh, John. <laughs> It's it's not, it's not it's not really a vacation. I just uh, this is what I do. I we could do the show from there too, John. That's right. I'll still be working. I'm, I don't ever take vacation because I just I do what I want every day. Every day is a vacation, brother. I just that, change locations. Like right now, I'm at my house in Mexico. And next late next week, I'll be back up at my place in California. And unfortunately, the time I was supposed to be at Chad's, I'm going to be at my fucking cabin in Tahoe. What what can you say? Yeah. I mean, well, what I can say in court, the man who spends more than 30 seconds trying to convince everybody else he's innocent means he's guilty. I, so. I, have, I, was, I, was, I was feeling like I was doing a little much too convincing in that spiel. I'll agree with you. <laughs> 
Slap and let it go. Uh, no, uh, it. Then I'll come back and do OSG. I I thought I was gonna have to do. I I, I thought I was gonna do OSG this year. I thought about it. I did. Just to kind of come back and because OSG is where I qualified for my first Giants live event in Indiana. Um, <laughs> so I thought about. I I highly considered it, and I still may do it next year just for funsies. But just kind of got to see see how I feel. Mm. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Probably. Yeah. This this year alone, I've got I've already got way too many contests set up. So, mm. so let me ask yeah, you another you question, you know, brother. Just... Talk to us about you've had some. I love the stories of the you know the goddamn up moment and the the, the greatest moment. Now, talk to us about you know because obviously we really want to be inspiring for our listeners. So, mm-hmm. <clears throat> talk to us about uh, a situation that you had to overcome. You know, and there's probably many of them, but uh, again, pick the one that's the most entertaining because you know. People that are trying to get into the sport, they always find reasons that get mm-hmm. in their way when, in essence, reasons are kind of like excuses. But we've all had those stories that 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 display that there is no reason or an excuse that gets in the way when you really want it. So give us one of those. So uh, it, it's going to be it's going to be two uh, because like it. it's, it's always the Arnold Classic for me. The Arnold okay. Classic preps for me are the most atrocious experiences I will ever have, and it gets. I don't think it gets worse every year, but it's always something different. Uh, in, in 2020, I tore, I completely ruptured my distal bicep tendon seven weeks out of the Arnold Classic. Oh. Um, yeah, it was, and that was oh. my first big pro show. So that's why, it, that is not why I placed the way I did, but it definitely affected me because I didn't get surgery. I duct taped it down, put some sleeves on. I couldn't really train for those six weeks. All I could do was deadlift. Um, so 2020, that was rough, but then eight weeks out of the Arnold 2020, my <laughs> uncle died suddenly and I had to say goodbye over the phone. Oh, Jesus. So, it, and my uncle, there was a point in time where it was my dad, myself and my uncle, and we were the only thing keeping each other together. So we were very close. So that happens. And then it's like, that was one of those moments where like after eight weeks out, that happens. And then seven weeks, my bicep comes off. I like on frame, I dropped that frame. I just got stood there. I was like, do I need to be doing this anymore? Like what is, what is the yeah. point? <clears throat> but going, getting past it, going <clears throat> wrong, accepting that I was not going to perform at my best. I learned, it was one of those situations, like I said, with the frame, I learned a lot about myself in that 18 feet. Yeah, Like it was, it was just mm-hmm. that same situation. Those six weeks, I learned more about myself than, I ever thought I was going to. And then the Arnold this year, I actually started that prep with a fractured rib um, and then a fractured hand. I had deadlifted not too long before the Arnold, before I got my alternate invite, I pulled a 1025 in a suit just on a whim in the gym one day. I was like, yeah, I want to try it. Let me see if I can do this. And I forgot to put my belt on. Um, oh, jeez. You yeah. forgot to put your belt on. Yeah, so I, I forgot to put my belt on. I pulled it, but instead of blowing out into my belt, we believe what I did was contracted inward in a term to, in, you know, basically not having that sensation pushing in. It didn't, I didn't think to blow out. So instead, I contracted inward and I fractured one of my ribs. And then it was oh, a freak yeah, it was, it was, yeah, it was a freak accident. Um, one of the, my figure eight straps like fractured. It was like a, a, eh, a substantial stress fracture on the outside of my hand. So it was kind of like shit. So that started my Arnold prep. <clears throat> and then I had the situation where I went through all three of those suits, bam, 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 one after the other. <laughs> and then I go in to help a group of guys that were squatting equipped in my gym. And one of them, I shit you not, full sat on my head on a box because he, he had put, he had gotten in the rack. He had his head, but he had gotten in the mono, had his headphones on. I put my hand on his back. I was like, don't move. I'm fixing your box. He had pushed his box oh, too far under right. himself. So he oh. pushed his box too far under himself, and he would have fallen off the back if he had squatted on it. So I bent over to move the box, and he did a, a dry squat to try and find his box. I guess he didn't hear me unless I was moving it for him, and he comes down right on top of my head. So it's ass, head, <laughs> box. Well, did, like, what part of your face hit the – was oh, it your God, face dude. that hit the box? <laughs> Out of my head. <clears throat> Out of my head. <laughs> if, if, if it had smashed your face, like, you could have broken your nose. <laughs> Yeah, you know so I mean? oh, this, this, story gets, this, this story gets better. One of the guys that was helping me get into my suit, learn how to use the suit, was a gentleman by the name of Alfredo Barrera. Um, and Alfredo is one of the most gifted, equipped squatters in like the kind of the 181, 220 area. Uh, like uh, most nights he would out-squat me. I've got over 100 pounds on him. 
um, just very gifted in equipment, right? So Alfredo comes back for his set after laughing at that, swings his belt behind him and hits me in the dick. <laughs> we're, we're talking, we're talking three minutes span here, people. Within three minutes, I my head's been sat on. I've been slapped in the dick. I was like, God <laughs> damn it! So I was like, okay. So then I go home. I'm resting. I'm relaxing. Everything's good to go. I, I come out. I come out to my car. The day before, I'm, so I'm getting my last minute things done. The day before I leave, I come out to my car. Flat tire. Just got those tires two months ago on my Jesus car. Jesus Christ. Yes. Dude, are, you go, are you walking everywhere in bubble wrap right now? Dude, it's just, just, the, it is just the Arnold. Good. It is just the Arnold. So, Good. oh, this, this gets better. Pours, man. Holy shit, it keeps going? Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> on the way to... So on the way to, I drive, my parents live 15 minutes from the airport. I live like an hour and a half, two hours. So a lot of times I'll leave my car there and then they will, excuse me, then they'll fly, they'll, you know, drive me from their place. So I don't have to pay to leave my car at the airport. On the way to their house, I get an alert. Must serve a steering system now on my car. I'm like, oh, that's cool. So I, in my thoughts, I thought it was saying like the power steering was like, you know, you need power steering fluid or power steering is going out. I'm like, oh, that's, I'm strong enough to turn a steering wheel. I had to do it with one of my old trucks. I'm not worried about that. I get home to my vehicle. I drive from the airport. I'm home for one day. Go out and try and start it. My steering wheel won't even turn. I've been home for one day. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh. So, then, yeah, so that was, that was my Arnold prep and finish. Wow. <clears throat> so how's your yeah. world's prep going? <laughs> you know, it, it, not... Not terrible. I have a strained abductor, which we're working on right now. It's not really an issue, mm-hmm. though. Um, it, my world's prep won't start full gear until the day after I get back from Leeds, which, mm-hmm. you know, so I, so I fly out tomorrow. Like, I'm already in good shape. So I just right. really need to refamiliarize with some of the stuff and kind of work on with something like Worlds, Nick, you know. Um, I'm sure you guys have caught on as well. John, I know you're not mm-hmm. a stranger to this. It's, it's a more athletic contest than the Arnold Classic. Yeah, mm-hmm. Arnold so, is heavy, 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 and not a lot of moving. Worlds, you never know, man. You'll be trotting all over the place, you know? Exactly, mm-hmm. which I was already in really good shape. Like, I wasn't in good Arnold. I wasn't in I was in good shape for the Arnold, but I wasn't in peak Arnold condition. Um, mm-hmm. Like, to be in peak Arnold condition, I would have wanted to come <laughs> in about, three, about 360 is where I would have wanted to be. I was about 350. Wow. So I was already in really good work capacity shape going into this prep, so – I'm I'm not too I'm not too worried about this prep once I get back. So, yeah. question: They're always very secretive about the events. You know, there's mm-hmm. a deadlift ladder. Do you know if there's <laughs> any other events or just the deadlift ladder so far? Oh, uh, come on, Nick! Come on, buddy! You've gotten that same email where we they say, "Hey, it might be any of these thirty things, but don't tell anybody." <laughs> <laughs> right, but don't but don't tell anybody. <laughs> yeah, so like it's that's basically the same thing as this year. It's um, so there's some new stuff in there this year. Oh. Um, there's some I could there's some there's some stuff on the disciplines list that we have not seen in a very long time. We're talking like Yoko Holo, <clears throat> like we're talking. It's wow. been a while. Yeah, it's been there. It's been a while. So. It's it, it, depending on which ones they pull from the disciplines, be ready for list. Basically, it, it's going to be a very interesting contest, and they're very good events. That's okay. cool, brother. <clears throat> right yeah. around the corner, too. You know. Yeah, yeah, I'm not excited about that part, but it's there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's coming up quick. It is, but it's cool. We got they've got a they've got a lot more guys coming from different countries, which is kind of neat. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, why isn't a – Nick, you may – John, you may know as well. I think Nick's a little bit closer to him, though. Why is Z not coming? He qualified at the OSG. Um, he will not take the vaccine. We we just oh, – is that what it is? We just had him on the yeah. show last, what, couple of week, a week ago? Yeah. Yeah, a week ago, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> really? So yeah. he has to get vaccinated to come here? Yeah. If you're from – if you're not from the U.S., you have to be vaccinated to come into the U.S. He won't that- get vaccinated. That's the weirdest thing because I got a message from Giants Live this morning. I, I got my COVID test done to travel to Leeds, like I was instructed to, mm-hmm. um, and I got my results really quick. I was like, all right, cool, good to go. And then I get a message from Giants Live this morning saying, hey, you don't need a COVID test to come to the UK. They, they changed yeah. the rules. They changed the rules, yeah. yeah I was like, just got all that. <laughs> okay, yeah, I just, I just saw that. I was like, what the f- is going on? Mm-hmm. But, mm-hmm. well, 
It's, like, it's recently I, changed. It's, even the mandate in New York, they just, they just uh, changed that too. Like, uh, remember the, the basketball player, Kyrie Irving, he couldn't play over here. And now oh, he changed where he could play here. Yeah, so okay. things well, are kind of getting back to normal. Yeah, yeah. I, I just hope. That sucks for Z, though. I wanted Z there. I enjoy competing against him. Um, and I honestly don't think there's anyone else in Lithuania that can hold a candle to him at the moment. Mm. I could be wrong, but I, I don't think – I think he is the best representative to come out of Lithuania. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I would have to agree with that. Yeah, bro. Yeah. So, brother, you're, you're clearly world elite. So, for all of the up-and-comers, they love to hear bits and pieces of advice from a guy like you who's right in the middle – of the thick of everything. So <clears throat> give us for, for the up and comers, what piece of advice do you give to the up and comers? Take your time. Take your time. That is, that is huge. I, I did a lot very quickly and I feel like I missed a lot of really good memories from that. But what's cool that's happening now, just because you asked that question, Gabriel Pena just threw a contest in Texas called beer stone. Which, yeah. was, which was a pro-am. That's why I went the week after the Arnold. A lot of people, the pro-ams didn't work because every pro wants the Brian Shaw treatment. They want to be flown. They don't want to pay to play. They don't want to work a third job to make shit happen. Well, guess what? You're not Brian, you're not Brian Shaw. Get, don't set up a GoFundMe. Get the fuck over it. Let's go on. Um, but these, <laughs> these amateurs showed up, and it was cool because I got the opportunity to sit in a circle of them and just talk to them. They found out where I was hiding, and it was just flood and come talk. And I was like, okay. And so with the pro-am scene being available, you may come into this as an amateur. You're probably not going to win. You might win, but the odds are stacked against you if you've already got pros that are experienced in the class. But coming to that is going to be more experience than you're going to get than going to a seminar or watching World Strongest Man or competing against other amateurs. So I would say take your time, but then I would also say go to a contest you know you can't win. Yeah. yeah. Go to a contest where the odds are against you. That's very similar. We had Jerry Pritchard on uh, Pritchett. He said the same thing. He said, listen, go compete and find out what your weaknesses are. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, well and that, that's the thing. Like, you don't know until you – so, like, in, before I got to Canada, I, was, I thought I was a good thrower. Hell, yeah, I did that event. Didn't really train it. Took second on it by two seconds. Like, yeah, I'm, this is great. I get to Canada and meet Maxime Boudreau and Jeff Caron, and I can't throw for shit. <laughs> but like so that's the thing like not taking your time going to contest or taking your time going to contest you know you can't win because you don't know what you suck at until you see these guys who are good at everything mm. and then it's like damn i thought i was good at this no you're just a you're just a medium-sized fish in a fucking puddle where there's a whole ocean out there yeah oh yeah <clears throat> yeah there, there's no question about that no question mm -hmm. so here we'll put you on the spot with this one so oh, shit. Don't, don't brace yourself. It's not that bad. Uh, <clears throat> so give us the top five currently and rank them one through five. I think let's, let's, any actually, let's sweep the pot. Let's, let's sweeten the pot. Let's, let's say, even though it's unknown events coming into worlds, give us your prediction of, of the of worlds right around the corner. Uh, okay. Prediction. You want top five at worlds. Yep. And then I'm going to make oh. you go back to clarifying top five, uh, you know, currently and just in general. So we'll give you a little warm up with, with your prediction of top five before you start offending people by not giving them their spots in the top five. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, hate question, I hate questions like this. No I, yeah, right? No well, I hate questions like this because the depth chart is so deep. Um, totally. totally. So picking, picking five. I'm going to go a little over five because I believe there's top eight that at any day could be on the podium. Um, I, I would say Tom Stoltman right off the bat. He has a good day. Good luck. Tom Stoltman. And this, you're talking about, this is the world's prediction we're talking right now. Correct? This is, yeah, this is, this is top eight yep. world's strongest man. Tom okay. Stoltman, Alexei Novikov, Evan Singleton, Trey Mitchell, Maxime Boudreau. I, I just butchered his last name. I would say Maxime Boudreau, myself, Adam Bishop, and Janashia. Okay. Right off the bat. Yeah, Janashia, right off the bat. Those are going to be my guys. Okay, so now go top five currently and number them one through five. So for anybody who doesn't get named, this is just, is just a fun 
drill on a podcast. Don't start sending angry fucking emails. <laughs> like that. Top, I would say top five in the world right now. Yep. Mm. That's rough. And they have to be numbered once. You can't just throw five names. You got to give them their spot uh, on the total. You, you really put them on the spot, huh, John? Let's go, mm. baby. <laughs> so I, I'm, 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 I'm overly analytical. So now I'm arguing with who's done the most contests, progressed the most. Okay, no, who's doing two contests a year but wins all the contests? Uh, but right off the bat, Brian Shaw, I believe, is number one in the world right now. Um, I truly believe Brian is number one. He is not at his peak anymore. He is still number one in the world. Brian Shaw, Tom Stoltman. Brian Shaw, Tom Stoltman, Evan Singleton. List of giants so far. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Brian Shaw, Tom Stoltman, Evan, Evan Singleton, Maxime. Uh, who else do I toss for top five? Honestly, I, I got to say Trey Mitchell. I really do. Okay. I, I got to. Yeah, a lot of people are going to give me some shit for that, but Trey Mitchell is. So, what? What do you think? Martins deserves his place in there. Not yet, only because okay. he's been he's been out for so long. That yeah, that was yeah, the issue yeah. I was having. Um, I'm looking at guys that have been continuous threats over the years. Martins is always a threat, but <laughs> I also don't want to rank guys right now that are suffering from an injury. Yep. Good. Yeah, so that, that that's that's good. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, smart. that's why that's why I didn't say Brian for top eight at Worlds because his hamstring is a chronic issue with deadlift events. And we have a deadlift event. Yeah, <clears throat> so yeah, it's kind of yeah. like I didn't want to say that because I like contingent upon is no, there's no contingency. Yeah. It's who's going to dog it, who's not. Yeah. So, but no, I yeah, I, yeah, that's I didn't mention Martins because I don't know how back his bat is or how bad his back is. Yeah, and yeah, the guy just up. just came back. I mean, he's doing well since he came back, but he was he had a pretty good break. You know. Well, he, he did, and the guy's got <laughs> shit left. I mean, he got hit by a car on a bike last year. Two times. Twice. Yeah, yeah. And then <laughs> well, so, he, he and Romark just did like a 150-mile electric bike ride to California's Strongest Man, and Romark was putting up putting up on a story of them ready, and I was I just put, please take care of him. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like please take care of him. Like, he's, he's, just, he's a magnet for bad luck. He just is. Well, you know, so, the thing about it, he's the probably is as talk about just human beings. He's probably one of the sweetest fucking human beings that yeah. any of us know. He's yes, the yeah. nicest fucking guy. I mean, when we had him on the show, we asked him, you know, we were talking about what would you, you know, what do you want for the big picture? And you know, I was asking him to kind of talk about what he wanted in general. And he says, I want everybody to love each other. Mm. That was his yeah. answer. I was like, Jesus mm -hmm. Christ, if that doesn't display just a sweet-hearted individual. Forget what sex they are. This is just yeah. a sweet person, you know? No, Martins, through his core, is a genuinely nice human being with no expectations yeah. for a return, but he is a completely different man when he is competing. Yeah, oh, yeah. That, that is the thing. Like, like Martins, he's always kind. He is always kind, always very caring. But having been backstage with him, and I've seen him in the heat of the moment, he is – very dialed in. He almost, I'm, I'm going to, okay, I'm going to use a phrase here so I can get me in trouble. A lot of us become almost Rain Man-like when we're in warm-ups. Like, the pleasantries are gone. Like, there's that there's that element of respect where if a guy loads your bar, you're going to help him load his. But the pleasantries and the I hope your mom's okay, <laughs> hey, how's your daughter doing? That shit's gone. Yeah. Like, that doesn't exist. So, Martins is where very nice, very great man on the outside, give you the shirt off his back, even when he doesn't have one. When we go to compete, there's yeah. none of that exists for that man. And that's the way it's supposed to be. That's why yeah. he is so good. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely, brother. Absolutely. So, <clears throat> we went through our top five standings. That was actually, I was a pretty, I like the explanations behind it. That was good stuff, brother. You know, I'm, uh, I think way too much. <laughs> <laughs> well being analytic it can be very helpful if you can if you use it in the proper way you know breaking down yeah. technique things like that mm -hmm. that's a huge help you know it, it definitely has been a huge help in that front but it, it's hindered me a few times i've tried to make something more complicated than it is uh yeah. like, <laughs> like 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 the stone like <laughs> like the stone at the arnold my uh my coach we walked out we looked at it we got like five minutes to look at it couldn't touch it and i'm looking at like 
degree of angle. Like I'm trying to tell if the stone's going to stick to my shirt. Like, okay, I want to, I want to catch it this way because that slopes angle downward slightly mm-hmm. and it'll catch the groove and move the weight itself up my body. And I'm sitting there on the bench and my coach, dude, he looked at me. He's like, look, you're not good at stones. And he's like, so don't think too much about this and just realize that whatever you gonna, you're going to do, you're just going to have to manhandle this thing. Yeah, just go lift up the fucking rock, man. Mm-hmm. That's, yeah. pretty much what it came, that's pretty much what it came down to, which is funny yeah. because my coach is, you wouldn't know about looking at him. He's a civil engineer. Mm-hmm. Like he, he designs building trust layouts and then looks over them for other people once they have been. So he is super analytical. Mm-hmm. And for him to look at me and just go, dude, like you're just going to have to go whatever you do do it as hard as you can and we're gonna hope it works yeah well like you said when you dropped it and you picked it up a different way the next time there's a specific (laughs) way to pick that thing up that was in a contest i did in 2009 yeah and brian brian and i were the only two that like lifted it we went to oat's house two weeks before the contest and there there is literally a specific way to pick up that stone so there is and the way i did it was the wrong way um so on, yeah, that's on Sunday, for you. Yes, right. <laughs> so on, on Sunday, I met up with a. I, I was at. I flew out kind of early after or in mid afternoon Sunday. So I went over to see some people at the expo, just kind of walk around a little bit. And I get there, I meet up with Simon, who is JF's coach or handler at most of his contest. And mm-hmm. Simon said, JF said, "Good job with the stone." He was watching from his hospital bed, and I was like, "That that made my day." But then he said, JF yeah. also said something else. And I was like, what did JF say? Because JF doesn't sugarcoat anything for anyone. That's why I like him. Mm -hmm. (laughs) As soon as I picked that stone, apparently JF said, motherfucker picked it up backwards. (laughs) (laughs) That was was JF's only comment. I was like, like eight men have shouldered this thing since it's like conception. Whenever that fucking stone came to be and that, thanks JF. Appreciate that one, big homie. (laughs) (laughs) I love it. (laughs) Yeah. Right, on, but it, it it works, so I can't complain. Absolutely. <laughs> all right, right. So think about this: we got a time machine. Uh-huh. You can get in that time machine, and you can dial in the time, the date. You can go back only to talk to yourself. Give yourself one piece of advice: how far back in your life do you go? What are you doing? And what piece of advice are you going to give the young version of yourself? I would say I would go back to August 2009, 2010. Um, I, uh, I had, I had, I, I was a fairly, I was a damn good football player. And, mm. and uh, my, my dreams, I wanted to go play division one football. I wanted to go play in the NFL. It's what I wanted to do. And I have some, I have some foot issues. Nick and I have talked about them a little bit and <clears throat> that I midway through August of, of camp, I exploded through my foot and ripped a whole bunch of bone spurs loose, and my football career was just over. And oh. I'll, all I had always been an athlete my whole life, and football was my world. And when you're in high school, it's usually the extracurricular activities you do. That's how you identify. Yep. And I, I already wasn't a very good jock by, by standard terms. Like, I, I didn't fit with a lot of those guys very well. I just always thought differently. And I just remember – going into my doctor and him telling me that football was no longer an option. Even if he does the fusions early, he's like, man, it's just not going to be a thing. I remember sitting there in that, that hospital room. I had no idea what I was going to do. I was like yeah. my whole life plan. Granted at 16, yeah. you can only have so much of a life plan, but everything I had planned was gone. You believed and, in it. That was your world. You believe that was your life. I mean, it's like, well, you've got a, you've got a whole new identity to find now. Exactly. And I was never an academic stud. I struggled in school. I, I just, my brain didn't work those ways. It's just not something that, so all I had was being an athlete. Like, that's what I knew. Like, I loved to work. I loved to work harder than everybody else. Like, I was that kid. I ran harder than everyone else. Like, I was the first one to puke, the last one to puke. Like, I always worked hard. So when that happens, it's just kind of like, oh, shit. So if I could go back, I would would go back. I I would go back to that moment where it happened and I fell and I was looking up, again, looking up at the sky. Didn't lose a keg this time, though. (laughs) <laughs> but just go back, just just go back and tell tell myself that life's gonna get a whole lot harder, but it's gonna work out. Yeah, like yeah. just keep doing what the fuck you're doing, and life's gonna pan out one way or another. Mm-hmm. Um, that that would have right. been something that kid needed to hear. 
Brother, that's fucking great advice, not only for that kid, but for just about anybody who's facing some serious challenges. Because, I mean, that's that's a really, really heavy-hitting piece of advice in general. You know, I mean, mm-hmm. that's, that's, life is always going to put you in some sort of a fucking chokehold. You just got to hold your breath for a little while and realize even if, even if you do wake up and you get, you, you were, you did get knocked out, you're going to still get to your feet. You're going to carry on. And, mm-hmm. uh, sometimes it's really hard to understand in those moments that life will carry on. So mm-hmm. that's a great yeah. piece of advice, man. That's really powerful shit right there. Very cool. Yeah. And it's, it's, it, I, in the, again, in the grand scheme, it's not that big of a deal. But in the moment, like I said, where I wasn't a yeah. very good jock, I didn't fit with a lot of those guys to begin with, but at least I was a football player. Like I had a yeah. cohesive unit that I was a part of, and it's what I was. That yeah. was the difficult part, like, and then it was just gone. Yeah. Like it yeah. was, and then it was like, well, what am I going to do? Like, I'm not going to, like, I, I, yeah, I'm not going to, I wasn't going to go to a big college on academics. It wasn't going to be a thing for me. Like it just wasn't. So then, you know, life fell apart, but... Just again to go back and tell that kid, hey man, just ball your fist up, take some swings. You're gonna eat some of your own teeth, but it's gonna be okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Very cool, brother. Very fucking yeah. cool. I love it. Mm-hmm. Well, we've had you on the show here for quite a stretch, but I want to thank you very much. But before you go, I got one more question for you. What you so, got? Ultimately, you're just fucking tearing up the world and what you're doing in the sport of strong man. I mean, you're a world elite. No questions. You're one of the best in the world, and you're just getting started. You got a lot more to go. All you got to do is keep doing what you're doing, <clears throat> and you're you're just gonna keep fucking pulling your way right to the top of the elite. So obviously that's what you're doing now. But when your time physical, when your physical time is done, and you're you're actually dead and gone, what do you want to be remembered for? What do you want Bobby Thompson's legacy to be? That's a rough one. Um... You know, I, I don't. This is this is going to sound weird, but you got to hear me out. I don't want to be remembered. I want to do a series of things in life that people, that series of things in life that are subtle, and I want to do them for as many people as possible. That slowly change the direction in which they're going, so they move on to progress. Now, why I don't want to be remembered is because I don't want these people to realize that somebody else helped them do that because the moment a person realizes that they start taking credit away from themselves and they start giving it to somebody else. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, you okay. see athletes do, all, athletes do it all the time. They're like, mm-hmm. you know, Mike Tyson does it about his first boxing, boxing coach, mm-hmm. man, for some reason that old guy knew he just knew I was going to be a world champion, which is great. The man deserves that. But when you see Mike Tyson <laughs> talk about that, he loses confidence in himself. I was like, so I don't want people to look back and go, yeah, Bobby did this for me. And because he did that, I went this way and did this. No, I want, I don't want them to know that that moment had anything to do because they need to take full credit for their own accomplishments. They only pass it on to somebody else mm-hmm. because then the next, the next time something hard happens, or they want to do something great. They're going to be waiting for somebody else to show them how to do it or to push them that direction. Yeah. That's that. I don't want to be, so I don't want to be remembered. You, you can't, you you kind of went the phase of uh, teach a man how to fish. Have you ever heard that story? Mm-hmm. The same before. Yeah. 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 So that, that's pretty deep. I, I understand exactly what you're trying to say. What you're saying. Yeah. Yeah. So you really want to be. You want to affect as many people as you can, but you don't want them to know that you did it. You want them to basically move forward on their own steam. You you kind of help them get past that tipping point, but mm-hmm. they're off on their way because of you. But you don't really want to be remembered as. Hey, he's the guy. You want to be just silently in the background. That's that's pretty fucking cool. Okay. It, it's, it's very. Uh, it's pretty noble. Yeah. Yeah. Noble. Very noble. Nick yeah. Has very noble. Correct word. Yeah. Right. Thank you. Thank you, Nick. Because I was fucking searching. I was searching for a word. <laughs> 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 I have my uses. I have my uses. <laughs> Man, it, it's 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 the butterfly effect. That's all it is. It is. A, it's a twisted version of the butterfly effect, but it is. You know, a butterfly flaps its wings in Japan. And that causes a hurricane, and you know, off the coast of Florida. Mm. <laughs> yeah, we've already been in one of those. Right, exactly. <laughs> right. Yeah. That, that's exa- that's exactly it. And that's that's kind of that's. I want to be my own butterfly effect. Just right. flap my little ass wings, and then some kid cures cancer or some shit. Like, okay. nice brother. I got to tell you, you have been one hell of an entertaining guest. I got a fucking list of questions, and we just touched on a couple of them, which means you're going to have to come back. 
<laughs> you guys want me? Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah well, well, brother, I got to tell you, man, it's so fun having this show with you. You're entertaining. Your stories are great. You know, and more importantly, you're 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 really bringing a lot of helpful pearls of knowledge for the people listening to, which is really that's that's fucking awesome, brother. <clears throat> so, uh, well, Nick and Ark, do you have anything else for the big man before we sign off for this time? Because he's going to be coming back for sure. Uh, no, it's, it's been a pleasure, man, and uh, keep working on on the the, the keg toss. <laughs> <laughs> Work is definitely being done on the keg toss, man. I appreciate it, guys. Right, it's man. always great seeing you, Bobby. I'm. I'm sorry, Gimli followed you all the way over to to Dubai, but it's it's still it's it's fitting. Nick, listen, <laughs> he, he he literally stabbed you, and you apologizing. It, it's like it's like, it's like Chris Rock, Chris Rock apologizing to Will Smith right now. <laughs> there, yeah, yeah, exactly. There. Ouch, yeah, exactly. Ouch, you just got called Will Smith. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you just you just got called Chris Rock. <laughs> like, I just, just saying, I can afford the lawyers if I'm Will Smith. You can't always do a bitch slap on national television. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, man. oh, I love it. I fucking love it. Well, Bobby, mm, thank you very much. Good stuff. For, for the record, I just want you to know that I don't think you're stocky or compact. I think you're beautiful, baby. I appreciate that. Thank you. We all do. I, I appreciate that. Thank you very much. Absolutely, and I'm fucking loving the beard, dude. The beard is fucking rocking. It's man, fucking I just took beard. I just took like two inches off it, and I regret it. Yeah, oh, it man. looks it's Aww. fucking look. It's looking good, dude. You're you're looking like one of those guys where if there's some sort of an altercation, I'm gonna fucking run and get behind you really quick. <laughs> <laughs> no. I got paid to do that for a long time. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah, I, said, I mean, just, obviously that you got the skill, but even just the way you look, I'm still running behind you. <laughs> <laughs> That's uh, great, Dad. Well, brother, yeah. thank you so much for coming, and uh, you know, thank you for all of your entertaining stories, and more importantly, some of the great you know pearls of wisdom you dumped off here on the show. Because we're the, the show is all about inspiring and motivating the listeners to become the best version of themselves and brother you really helped that a lot with this show so we want to thank you very much uh there you have it everyone there's another edition of legends of iron we will see you next time legends of iron is brought to you by muscle mints muscle mints is the creator of carnival pure beef protein icing Beef built muscle and carnivore is the world's number one selling beef protein. And don't forget to try our new carnivore flavor, Rocket Pop. Oh, damn! Whoa, this is it right here. Wow, is this protein? Delicious. This is so good to be protein. Woo, we about to change the game with this one. You're gonna love it.